Welcome and well met. It is I, the Quonset Manager, and due to a blizzard coming in that has lasted for over a week now, I cannot make the crossing through Forlorn Muskeg. I really wish to finish up the final segment of the railway lore, but Mother Nature is just being a bitch. So while I rest here at the camp office, contemplating why I can't seem to open this window and shoot the passing deer out of it, I thought I might avail you of some wild speculation as to what is Wintermute. Well, it's the title of the in-game storyline. By episode 2, we are given the title drop in the form of a code word to be spoken to a mysterious stranger in a far-off town called Perseverance. The symbolism is so heavy, it could be used to beat the old bear to death. Not much to work with, and we're more than likely going to need to wait for episode 3 before we get the full story, but are we going to let that stop us from coming up with some wacky theories? Hell to the no. The obvious place to start is the word itself, winter and mute. A mute is someone who cannot speak, but it is also what you do to a device to stop it from talking. Winter is, well, winter. A season, but it also symbolizes death, cold, and an end. So, we have the cold, silent end. Winter mute is a word in and of itself that is a metaphor for the silent apocalypse, which is the mainstay of the long dark. That's actually its tagline, the silent apocalypse. So, case closed, right? Heh. <laughs> no, I've only just begun. Now, the most famous of winter mutes is the character from the Gibson novel Neuromancer, which is a story about an anti-hero manipulated by an AI to help it go rampant and take over the world's computer networks. In the end, it does so, and nobody even notices, as the AI merges with the titler Neuromancer and becomes a superintelligence. Then it starts talking with other AIs in space and basically forgets that humanity exists because... bored now. What's this got to do with the long dark? Well, assuming it's not a direct reference, perhaps it could be, well, you might assume that it's a code word that indicates that a AI has gotten out of control on the planet. If this is the case, it might explain why the trapper Jeremiah is living off the grid for a reason. He's hiding from an AI. Why? I have no clue. However, Somehow this code word will tell the person he sent you to go talk to to do something that will stop the madness and save the world. Maybe. But seriously, you think this other guy, who is the one assumed to know how to stop rampant AIs, hasn't already put two and two together? He's waiting for a code word, or he won't turn on the AI destroying McGovern? I mean, I get that Jeremiah has his hidden secret works in an aurora mysterious device that is located under his shack, but how are we supposed to take all these strange tropes and use them to make any sense of things? Furthermore, if it's an AI that's behind the aurora, well, it's one dumb AI. No, the aurora is the sort of thing you would set off to destroy an AI that has taken over every computer on the planet, not something an AI would activate. Of course, that's a possibility as well. Maybe this is an attempt to save humanity, not destroy it. I don't buy it for a second, but I'm throwing it out there all the same. Why don't I buy it? You'll have to wait for my video about the Aurora itself to explain why I don't think the Aurora is man-made. We really can't come up with any lore about this at the moment, beyond it's obviously a reference to the silent apocalypse, so case closed? Ha! I wouldn't bring you this far down the rabbit hole without some sort of payoff. Allow me to introduce you to Slim. Specifically, Urgil Slim Wintermute, born July 9th, 1917, presumed dead October 1977. He was an American collegiate and professional basketball player. Born in Portland, Oregon, Wintermute attended high school in Longview, Washington. A mobile 6-foot, 8-inch center, Wintermute was a key member of the 1938-39 Oregon Ducks men's basketball team. Winners of the first NCAA Tournament Championships. Wintermute was voted first team All-Pacific Coast Conference and named an All-American in 1939. He was elected to the University of Oregon Athletic Hall of Fame in 1994 and is one of the six Ducks whose numbers have been retired. When, I guess you're asking, what the bloody hell does this have to do with the long dark? Well, wait for it, friend. 
October 21st, 1977, Winter Mute set out in his yacht from Portage Bay in Seattle's Lake Union and did not return. His boat was found a few days later with one of Wintermute's friends asleep on the boat. Wintermute was never found. Ooh, curiouser and curiouser. So we have a Wintermute who worked for Boeing, known for big projects, and it has a division known as Boeing Phantom Works. Check out their logo. It's a guy in a big hat hiding his face behind a cloak. So, we got a guy who may or may not have worked on secret government projects who then vanished near the Canadian border, specifically near where the fictional Great Bear Island would have to be located for the geography to be internally correct. Now, assuming he was still alive, this guy would have to be over 100 years old. He'd be an old man. He'd be a Methuselah, you might say. Yep, I'm calling it right now, before the third episode comes out, and I'm certain my theory will be completely destroyed in the process. But damn, I love my theory, so screw that noise. Methuselah is Urgil Slim Wintermute, former basketball star and scientific genius who worked for Boeing before uncovering a horrible secret, becoming completely disillusioned with society and running off to hide in the Canadian wilderness. Is he the bad guy who started all this in a misguided attempt to destroy all, quote, evil, unquote, technology? Or is he the hundred-year-old man who will save us all with wisdom from the before times? I got no clue. However, if you look at Methuselah in the trailers, he's a rather tall man who with age has most likely shrunk a bit due to bone loss. Could Methuselah have been a basketball-playing super scientist? Sure, let's go with that, friend. So, in this theory, Wintermute isn't a code word, but a name. Jeremiah is actually a government agent sent to monitor the area and watch the eco-terrorists on the island. Jeremiah has put two and two together and figured out that Wintermute is the guy behind all this, or the guy who can end all this, or... something. I, I don't know. I I'm sure it's goddamn important whatever the MacGuffin is. Now, let's go completely off the rails and make some really outrageous claims. Wintermute refers to Urgil Slim Wintermute, a.k.a. Methuselah, who, while working at Boeing Phantom Works, gave himself greatly extended life using experimental drugs. He's going to live for 200 years, and he is strong enough to bench press Rene Descartes. While he was working for Boeing, he was privy to their satellites with that were monitoring the sun. He learned of information that indicated the end of the world was coming, whereas the evil government drones agreed to keep it quiet so that the elites could plan for the end times to keep the population from panicking, a la the movie 2012. Slim, on the other hand, wanted to tell the world and warn everyone. He wanted to give people a chance. So, in 1977, his friend was given orders to kill Slim and make it look like an accident. Slim survived and swam over a dozen miles to shore before disappearing into the Canadian wilderness. He adopted a new name and spent many years in Pleasant Valley, pretending he was a draft dodger as his cover story before recent events forced him to take a more active role. It is Slim who is the true leader and founder of the Forest Talkers. Slim, having given up on any hope of warning the world, decided to embrace environmentalism as a way to redeem himself for his past sins in the pursuit of unfettered scientific progress. He thus founded the Forest Talkers to be his cat's paw, and his actions did not go unnoticed. The government sent Jeremiah to investigate the Forest Talkers because of some of the shadowy powers that be we're still trying to find Slim, who knows some super science bullshit that everybody wants. Jeremiah's goal was to figure out who Methuselah was and only just figured it out when the old bear attacked. And that's when you come in. So when you deliver the code word, you will be letting the other agent who is part of Jeremiah's network know that Methuselah is Wintermute. So to sum all this madness up, Wintermute is the code word to let Jeremiah's network of spies know that Methuselah is Urgil Slim Wintermute, the basketball superstar, super scientist, super soldier, who faked his death after an assassination attempt and thus hid in the Canadian wilderness where he founded a group of environmental radicals to prepare for the coming solar superstorm that he discovered while working for the space division of Boeing's Phantom Works. And I have no idea what I'm talking about, other than I really, really want to see in Episode 3 Astrid completely surrounded by bad guys when Methuselah shows up, 
acting like a frail old man just to get in close, and as the bad guys chuckle with evil intent, Methuselah tilts his head to the side, and you hear his neck ominously crack. Then Methuselah throat punches two guys at once and ninjas the rest of them into hamburger. And, as Astrid is looking on in disbelief, Methuselah rubs his shoulder that he injured while body-slamming some fool into a table and says, This was much easier back when I still had my three-point jump shot. Thank you for stopping by the Bear Island Tourist Kiosk. Be sure to stop by the Quonset Garage if you find yourself needing any supplies. Just remember our motto, Quonset Garage, where the water is always free.